greetings from Bishop Aubrey Shines and G2G Ministries in Tampa, Florida. We pray that you would be blessed and encouraged by the biblical message you are about to hear. Today's classic sermon from Bishop Shines continues the series Fundamental Doctrines with reference scripture Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 through 2 in the Amplified Classic and King James translations. Let's go to Hebrews 6, beginning at verse 1 in the Amplified Translation, and then we're going to read 2. Now listen, when we get to 2, that's where you're going to see the doctrines that infants actually deal with. And we're going to make sure that we get this. Come on, read with Pastor, beginning at verse number 1. Let's read together. Therefore, let us go and get past what? The elementary stage in the teachings and doctrine of Christ the Messiah advancing steadily toward the completeness and perfection that belong to spiritual maturity. Let us not again be laying the foundation of repentance and abandonment of dead works or dead formalism and of faith by which you turn to God. These are the infant things again, verse 2, with teachings about purifying the laying on of hands, the resurrection from the dead, and eternal judgment and punishment. Why? These are all matters of which you should have been fully aware long, long ago. Grab someone by the hand and tell them these simple things, these infant things, is for the new believer. Tell them if you've been in church for a long time, but you don't know the simple things, the infant things. Tell them it's time for you and I to grow up. Come on, grab the hand, tell them let's grow up. All right, be seated. Let's go into the word of the Lord here. A few weeks ago, I gave some of the basics. I've already begun to deal with the doctrine of repentance. Every believer should know that. I also began a portion of dealing with faith as well. I don't have time to go over it. You must get to CD. Please, I beg you to get to CD uh, on it. Uh, one of the things that I gave you was Romans 10, 8 through uh, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And it dealt with uh, the speaking of the word. Often we use that scripture for if a man believes in his heart and then confesses with his mouth, salvation is made. Most of us, including myself, nothing's wrong with it. We've often used that scripture only to make sure that a person has become indeed born again. However, that scripture is not just about being born again. It also has to do with speaking the word of the Lord because in that same scripture, the framework of that scripture, it all, all actually says that if we'll make a confession with our mouth. So we know that faith is something that we hear, something that is said. I also gave you Matthew 12 uh, before as well. Again, I don't have time to go over it. You must. But now we're going to move a little further. This is where I left off a few weeks ago here at 2 Corinthians. Let's turn, if you don't mind, 2 Corinthians, and we're going to go over uh, to the fourth chapter. That's 2 Corinthians. And let's move over to the fourth chapter, and let's start right around the seventh verse there. Now, I'm going to ask you to make sure that you read this with me. I will not be able to finish this. I'm not trying to finish this. I'm taking my time because there is, if you've been in church for any period of time somewhere else, you have been probably, especially if you've been in a word kind of charismatic kind of a church, you have become the victim of what I call a super hyperbole faith. It's a faith that really doesn't have real roots to it, but it is a teaching that teaches us that if we just keep confessing over and over the positive thing, then positive things will begin to come back to us. But that is not the teaching of the scripture, the way Christ, his apostles, and even in the Old Testament, I'll prove it to you as the weeks go by, that they taught there is a need to speak the word of the Lord. But understand, just because you speak it, it doesn't mean what you may hope it to mean. Therefore, we're going to have to get a real understanding. Let's go to verse number seven. 
Let me begin to show you another portion of the doctrine of faith. Make sure you're paying attention. Don't let anyone talk to you right now. This is how and one of the things the enemy will use to distract you. When people are talking to you, it is no more often than a ploy to get your mind away from the word of the Lord. Why? The enemy does not want you to know the scripture. This is the reason why so many of us, we respond to people in bad situations in our flesh, in our mind, because we don't know the word of the Lord. And so make sure you know the word of the Lord uh, as the word has been given to us by Christ and his apostles. Verse 7, let's read it together in the Amplified Translation. Come on, read with Pastor. However, we put what? This precious treasure, which is the divine light of the gospel, where? In frail human vessels of earth. Paul's right there. Put your hand on your heart. Repeat this with me. Say, according to the word of the Lord. Say, according to the doctrine of faith. In this earthen body, I literally possess a divine presence, which is supernatural. Say, even though it's in my flesh, Christ has deposited into me this supernatural gift keep that in mind let's go back to the scripture one more time let's go back to the top read one more time from the top however we possess what this precious treasure the divine light of the gospel where in frail human vessels of earth that the grandeur and exceeding greatness of the power may be shown to be from who hold it where's the power shown from Put your hand on your heart. Say the power, the power is shown from God. Watch this. Let's read the rest of it. Let's go back one more time. Exceeding greatness of the power may be shown. Come on. I can't hear you. Be shown to be from God and not from ourselves. Now watch this. That's simply giving us an insight. That if you're going to understand the basic doctrine of faith, one of the doctrines of faith is not just speaking the word, but it's understanding the word is already in you. That is why I gave you the scripture some weeks ago about uh, 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 Romans 10, uh, 8, 9, and 10. For the word is nigh thee or near thee, even in thy heart through thy mouth. This is one of the reasons that I'm having you even on this fast to speak out loud the word of the Lord. Faith, according to the scripture, your faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Therefore, when you speak the word, watch this, you then begin to hear the word. If you don't speak the word, then when problems come, touch someone on the shoulder and tell them problems will come to your life. Come on. Tell them, I don't care how grand you are, problems are going to knock on your door. When problems come to your life, if you don't speak the word, guess what? You'll speak out of yourself. And so I'm trying to get you away from speaking you and start speaking what God says. How many of you can kind of figure it out? God knows more than we know. Come on. How many know that God knows better than what we know? So if we're saying what he says, then we're going to find ourselves in a better situation. Let's, let's go to verse number eight because this is so key. To so many of us, and we miss this because, again, faith has been taught, speak, speak, speak a certain way. And the assumption is that if you only keep saying the same thing, then something good always is going to happen. Let me show you what happens in the doctrine of faith. Come on, look at verse number eight. And I want you to read this along with me, starting at the very top. Watch this. Read with pastor. We are what? We are hedged in. That means we are pressed on every side, which is what? Troubled and oppressed in how many ways? Wait a minute. Stop right there. Faith, if you go back to verse number 7, says that faith is in us. In these uh, frail, what Paul called, in these frail earthen vessels. Even though we have the word of faith in us, note what happens. The Bible says, according to Paul, he's there in Rome. He says, even though we have it in us, we are pressed and trouble and oppressed in how many ways? How many ways? Now watch this. Jesus said this. You may want to take note of this. Jesus said, wherever my word is, persecution must come. I want to make sure you get that. 
Jesus said, as a matter of fact, repeat what pastor say, according to the words of Christ, wherever the word of Christ is, say Jesus himself said, persecution will attach itself or surround the word. Now, come on, everyone look at pastor, put your hand back on your heart again. Say the word is in this earth vessel. Watch this. If the word then is in your earth vessel, guess then where your problems are going to face you all around you. Jesus said, don't ever forget this, people. Jesus said, wherever your faith is, then the word will make sure that it attracts persecution. So don't ever assume because you are acting in faith. Well, pastor, I did the right thing. I said the right thing. I gave my tithe the right way. Why are all these problems happening to me if I'm doing what God has called me to do? Go back to the word. The word says wherever you are in Christ and you are saying what God has called you to say, then persecution is going to knock on your door. Would you grab someone by the hand real quick, please, really, really quick, and tell them as wonderful as you are. Come on, tell them as wonderful as you are. Tell them persecution will knock on your door. That means that none of us can get away from this when we're speaking the word. Let's go back to verse 8. I want to make sure that you get it. Come on, read with pastor. We are what? We are hedged in. Let's go back to it. I can't hear you. We are hedged in, which is what? Pressed on every side, which is what? Troubled and oppressed in every way, but not cramped. Wait a minute. That is a word that is telling you that when you are speaking in faith, even though you may be surrounded, what you're dealing with may be pressing you. You are not going to be crushed. In other words, you're going to feel the pressure. But God's not going to let you get taken out of here. You're going to watch this. Watch this. Even though you are doing what is right. It doesn't mean automatically right is going to overtake you. That means that even when you do things that are right, sometimes bad things happen. Well, wait, pastor, then maybe God really doesn't love me. That's why you know he loves you. He loves you enough to allow you to deal with things. Remember where we started in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, that we're moving away from elementary things over into spiritual maturity? See, part of growing up means you learn how to deal with pressure. And if you don't ever know how to deal with pressure, you're still acting out as an infant. You know, when an infant acts out, they whine, they cry, they bellyache all the time. When they want attention, they scream, they holler. Why? That's the way infants communicate. Can I drop a bomb on you? There are a lot of grown-up folk that are still infants. Look down your row for just a moment and say, he ain't talking down here, but way down on the other end of the row, he must be talking to each of you. There are a whole lot of believers that watch this, watch this, they go to church but the moment pressures press them, they act like children. Why? They never spiritually grew up. So you're living out of your flesh, but you're not living through the spirit. Do you know that there are times that God will allow you to go through things? Look at pastor that are negative that he allowed you to go through. I want that to soak in. Wait a minute. He's tempted me. No, no, no. He tempts no man. God will allow you that are mature to sometimes go through something, a circumstance or a scenario that you didn't create. Well, then why does he allow me to do it, Pastor? Not only are you showing maturity, please write this down, but someone is looking at how you respond to things that are negative in life. And if there's never an example, how will they ever grow up? Can I talk to you adults here? How many of you have children? You're going to be able to relate to this if you're, if you're half of a decent parent. There, is time, there are times in your adult life, listen to me, if you don't have children and you're believing God for children, you're going to, I'm in, but let me just pause. That means you're going to get married first. I better say that again. 
I said, you're going to get married first. Well, I just, I keep having babies. You're immature. Hmm. Excuse me, I'll be back. I'm coming over here on this side. When you are a parent, there are things that you will sacrifice for your children, not because you need to sacrifice, but the child needs to sacrifice. When my children were small, even no matter how hungry I may have been, if they wanted something on my plate, I never, ever not allowed them to eat off of it. They didn't know I was starving, felt like I was about to faint. But as a parent, you give it to them, and you never want to show, hey, this is mine. Well, you got to wait. I've been waiting all this time to get my food. That's in maturity. A good parent would take from their plate, and if someone says, no, no, that's, that's, uh, no, 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 let them have it. Oh, ain't that good. And sometimes, if you had a son like Malcolm, he'd eat it all. And said, and look, at, that was good. Yeah, man, I'm so glad. And it may not be no more in the pot for me to have. So you know what? I'd go into the pantry and get me some bread and make me a peanut butter sandwich when he wasn't looking. Now watch this. I'm trying to help you. When you're, when you're going through pressure, sometimes it's not for you. Sometimes it's for someone else. Sometimes God allows you to deal with something a little longer than someone else would deal for. Listen, it's not that God is picking on you, but God is raising you up to become something that, you, that, that somebody else can look at you and say, wait a minute, if she went through this and she had success, then I can go through what they went through and I can come out just like they came out. But if you never do it, if you never know it, if you never understand it, then you'll never become a part of it. So sometimes in your faith, watch this, you will be pressed. Have you ever did what was right and you didn't get the results that somebody else got even though they were not living right? Come on, talk back to me. Have you ever watched people that are living any kind of way they're doing it, any kind of way they want to do it, and it seems like they're getting further ahead than you are, but you're going through more than they're going through, and in your mind, you begin to wonder, wait a minute, God, if God is really on my side, let me tell you something, that is a trick of the enemy. The enemy wants you to begin to question whether or not you're really even in the will of God. Therefore, we'll begin to look at people that are doing things that are wrong, and blessings are coming their way, and you can't understand, you're worshiping, you're giving, you're giving tithe, you, you're helping people out and instead of getting what's good you get what's evil in return let me help you when you understand the basic doctrine of faith that is only a temporal moment that is in your life that moment is going to pass in your life but what God is bringing out of you is a way for you to grow up why because if nothing bad ever happens in your life then subconsciously you will only serve God when things are going well and you will only know that God is a good God but not a God that can bring you out of bad things. And if you never know that God can bring you out of something bad, then you will never know that he's a deliverer. Therefore, sometimes you are pressed in a situation. It doesn't mean that God has forgotten about you. It just simply means that God's going to allow a season in your life for some things to happen. And in the midst of it, you are going to come out your situation. God is going to bring you out. You're going to know that he's a deliverer. You're going to watch him deliver your family, your children. He's going to bring you out. Your circumstances are going to change. Your money is going to change. But while you are operating in faith, faith people will go through something. I shared it in the first service. There was a season in my life when I was born again, loved Jesus for real, loved the Lord, on fire for the Lord, witnessing, bringing in people to the church. But I was as broke as broke could be. Had holes in my pants. I said in the first service, that's why I could never even understand y'all buying these pants with holes already in them. I look at them and go, man, you better go get your money back. I hate to tell on Tina one more time. I know I shouldn't do this, but uh, her and Stacy bought me some uh, pair of jeans, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago because they passed it. Don't you have any jeans? Nope, don't have a pair. And the real reason I didn't have them is because when I was forced to wear them, I'd made up in my mind, I don't ever want to see them things again. The Lord bought me up out of Egypt. I'm done with the jeans. See, 
I'm going to get me some one day just to remember how good God has been. <laughs> but them jeans had holes in them, and I did not buy them like that. My two pair of shoes, one pair, you've heard me tell the story, my one pair of cowboy boots that I had found that were too big for my foot. I had to wear them because it was cold outside. I was at uh, Columbia at the time going to school and that sort of thing. My foot would slide, and it would be sore on the front. I went into a place to have the guy take down my heel, and he said to me, young man, if I take down the hill, it's going to raise up the front of the boot, and you're going to look like a clown out here walking. I said, I got to look like a clown because it's hurting my feet too much, and I didn't have the heart to tell him, man, I don't have any money. This is all that I have. How? Why would God allow me to live like this? The other pair of shoes I had, I had to put cardboard and paper all in my shoes to keep my feet from being wet. The piece of car that I had, I used to literally almost every day go out and pray over that car, anoint my car with oil, praying that God would raise up this car today. Old Plymouth scamp. I hope that you, y'all don't even know what a scamp car is. You got to go back to 1972 to find that one. I would literally pour oil on the car. Pray God in the name of Jesus. Whatever the problem, why? I didn't have any money. I couldn't go to a mechanic. I had to pray God. I believe today this car is going to run. Now watch this. When the car did not stop, I got me some tokens. Got on the subway going whenever I had to go. But that didn't stop me every day from praying that that car is going to start. Some days it prayed. I mean, some days the prayer happened. Some days it didn't. You know what God was teaching me? That even though I am pressed in, he is still my God. I never stopped going to church. I hope I'm helping somebody. I never stopped witnessing. I, man, I even got more on fire than I had ever been. But people would look at me with my raggedy clothes. And I could see some of the faces of the people. I even had people would come up to me, you know, uh, and they would kind of throw. You ever have somebody to throw off on you? They're talking about you, but they're not just really saying it to you, but they're still talking about you. And I would have groups of people, you know, when you really have faith in God, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly. They knew all the scripture, exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. Sometimes we need to really have faith in God. My Bible taught me that sometimes having faith in God, I'm still going going to be pressed in see sometimes you got to go through a season where you are as broke as broke can be why because if you never can serve God in your downtime you will only see God as a God to be celebrated when things are going well I got news for you God is still good I don't care what you're going through God, listen, God is still worthy of all the praise I don't care if you got two nickels or no nickels Some of y'all would have gave up on God if you had to go through some of the things I went through. Oh, I don't get no benefit. I've had people tell me, I ain't got no benefit out of serving God. Seemed like I started serving God. Hell came in my life. Duh. It was supposed to. Wherever the word. Listen, do you really think that God is going to bring you out? And then the enemy is going to sit back and just let you just have a good old time. Listen, the role, did you not remember what Jesus said about Satan? Said the role of Satan is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So when Satan sees you coming out because you're standing in faith speaking the word of the Lord, don't you know Satan's going to say, let me attack her job. Let me get them to fire her. See, a lot of us, we lose the victory because we don't understand the doctrine of faith. Whenever You assume that if you're really in faith, everything is smooth. All right, come back. Come, let's go back to the scripture. Let me prove it to you. I don't want you looking at me in that, with that tone of voice. Well, Pastor, I just don't receive it. That's why you're going through and you don't understand it. Come on, go with me. You got to learn this, people. Go back to verse number eight. You better watch this. Come on, read with Pastor. We are what? We're hedged in, which is what? Pressed on every side, which means what? We are troubled and oppressed in how many ways? But we're not what? Or we suffer what? Read it right. We suffer what? That's, the, that's an S at the end of that word. Can I bust your bubble? Can I help you understand the doctrine of faith? Sometimes when you are a faith leader, that's where the enemy is going to test you with. I've watched people that say God has given me a ministry for families. Guess what happened? Your family's attacked. You know, immature people don't understand that. Why? Well, it just seems to me, praise the Lord, if she had a faith ministry for families, her family would be perfect. Are you? What's wrong with you? 
The scripture is telling you wherever you're standing is where the attack comes. One of my dearest friends, Paul, uh, I traveled with this guy. I, I got to bring him here if the Lord give me the release to do so. Paul was instrumental in my life uh, as a young evangelist. He looked 10 and I looked 9 years of age. And he did some things, but he had, watch this, he had one of the greatest miracle authentic ministries I've ever seen. I watched Paul, Paul Reed, I watched him out of Atlanta, Georgia, walk up. I was standing there. I've told you this story. I'll never forget the story. There was a woman that had this, I, I just thought she was pregnant. Let me just, can we talk here? I thought she was pregnant. She had on, what do you call those maternity blouses or whatever it is? And she was an older lady. And I, when I first saw her in the, in the service, I forget what city we were in. Uh, I first saw her, I thought, and this is immature on my part. I'm just telling you right now. So please don't criticize your pastor. I was young. I was very immature. I said I was young and I was very immature. Come on, say amen. Paul called this lady out. He had a miracle ministry. I'm talking about a man full of faith and power. And he called her out. And when she came up, my first thought was, and this is very immature of me. I thought, man, she waited like forever to get pregnant. This was my thought. My mind thought, well, Sarah was 90. I was literally on the altar thinking this. And she's walking up there, and I'm thinking, whoa. And I was looking for a husband because I'm thinking, they, they, this is interesting. This lady was an older lady with this maternity top on. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. I know she really, and I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be helping pastor, I mean, the evangelist, lay hands and catch the people and that sort of thing. And when she came up, Paul looks at her. He said, the Lord spoke to me about you, woman. Do I know you? No, young man, I don't know you. He said, I never forget this. I'm standing uh, over on his left-hand side. He said, how long has this tumor been in your body? I went, oh, Jesus so not only could he discern, not only did he do it, he asked her, now here's, watch this, here's his, his level of faith in miracles. He said, are you ready for God to heal you, woman? She said, yes, I'm ready. And I got behind her. That was my job. I was to catch her. And so my job was to make sure I catch her. And because I knew what he did, he laid, and almost everybody he laid hands on, they just went out. And right before he touched her, so I thought, he leaned back, took his fist. I better come over here. When Jesus went to heal a, a, a man that was blind, you need to read the story. He didn't lay hands or even speak the word. The Bible says he spit. That's some nasty stuff. And ma the Bible says, and Jesus made a spittle. That means a little pile of mud. Took the spit mud put it on the man's eyes and say, y'all lead him to the water, let him wash. And the Bible says, and the man got healed immediately. Paul Reed took his fist. I was standing there. This lady had what I thought was a baby, then learned it was a tumor. He reached back. I'm thinking he's going to reach back and just lay hands real hard. He reached back. Some of y'all going to lose it. Don't y'all go out and do this. You better know Jesus because people will sue you if you do this and this don't work. He took his fist and... And I, I turned purple. I'm sweating thinking about it right now. He hit her. And when he hit her in the old Pentecostal church we were in at that time, the bishop seats and all the elder seats were back. The bishop got up and walked up. <laughs> can, can we, can y'all handle this? I'm, I'm said Deacon Ellis, man, I'm standing there and I felt like Peter. I, I was like, I'm not with him. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm in denial. I don't know this dude. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. I'm like, oh, Jesus. I'm like, and you can hear the mothers because in these old Pentecostal churches, all the mothers, that was their seat on the front row. See, Mother Graham is one of these little fine mamas. She sit on the second row. She ain't got to sit on the front. And the you can hear the mothers, the blood of Jesus, the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. He looked at me. I got sweat. Man, it was nice and cool in there. But when he did it, sweat popped. I went, oh, Jesus. And, and the bishop is standing there. The bishop, as you could tell, he was, he was like, oh, boy, this woman better get healed. Because you done punched this old woman in her stomach. 
with this big thing in her belly, and I'm standing there, and he looked at me, he says to me, he says, pick her up. <laughs> I'm thinking, don't punch her again, <laughs> please. And he said this, somebody help her go to the, to the ladies' room. They dragged this old woman out. Oh, I'm talking Sarah people. No, no disregard, sisters here. I'm talking <laughs> Abraham's wife, Sarah. And I'm like, Tanera, I'm going through. <sighs> I'm serious. I'm sweating. He's done laid hands on four or five other people. I'm praying, Lord Jesus. I'm, I'm just here picking up folk. I'm, I'm gone. I'm not even in the spirit. See, I'm telling you all about some of the basics of faith right now. See, I'm telling you sometimes faith ain't what you think it is. See, somebody else would say, why didn't he just pray for lay hands and speak the word? Why didn't Jesus just speak the word? Why did he have to spit on the ground and heal a man? Several minutes later, I heard a scream in the back and I'm like, what in the world? I'm thinking a baby didn't scream. Somebody's screaming. That woman has come back in there screaming. to. I'm almost in tears telling y'all this. She's screaming to the top of her voice. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. She got up and testified how many years she had to go around. Watch this. With, here's that word. With the embarrassment. Did you not just read it right there? We suffer embarrassment. She walked around with embarrassment. People thinking that she was pregnant at her age. And now the Lord just healed her. But watch this. Yet my friend Paul to this day is battling sickness in his body. Are you listening to me? See, faith is not some magic potion. Faith is, listen, write this down. Faith is what we as soldiers, we die with it. Oh, I'm going to prove it in just a few weeks from now. There are some, according to the scripture, that died in their faith. Didn't mean that they didn't have it, just simply died. All right, come on, I got to end this. Let's go back to the scripture. I want to make sure that you're getting this here. I want to make sure that you're getting this because I don't want you leaving here thinking faith. See, what I'm trying to develop in you is the doctrine of faith. See, the doctrine of faith will, can I give you in a snapshot what it'll make you do? The doctrine of faith will make you stand in spite of your situations. It means that whether you look like you're pregnant or you're not pregnant, you're still standing. Whether you're broke or you're poor, you're still standing. Whether things are working out the way you're, you're still standing. Why? Because you know it's just a matter of time. Your situation, would you touch two people and give them a high five and tell them your situation is going to change if you understand the doctrine of faith come on can we get can we go this one last time I'm going to stop here at verse number 8 turn to 8 one more time we are hedged in come on read with pastor we are hedged in which is what pressed on every side we are troubled and oppressed in every way but not cramped or crushed we suffer embarrassments and are perplexed and unable to find a way out but not driven to despair listen sometimes your faith won't let you see your way out but it does not mean you're not operating in faith well, I don't see my kids, pastor, getting better. It's not about what you see. It's about what God has said about your child. But if you don't know what he said, then you're going to speak out of your mouth what you see. Well, she strung out on dope. Stop saying it. I'm not saying be in denial. You can say she's strung out on dope, but don't stop there. Yeah, she, why not this? Why not confess this? She may be on dope right now, but with the faith I have in God, God's bringing my daughter out of this situation. My job may not make me the money that I need right now, but God don't need this job to do it. And I'm not going to quit my job. But while I'm on the job, either promotion is coming or God is going to give me favor and I'm going to still get what I need in spite of what my job ain't doing. My grandchildren may not be where they need to be, but God has a way of bringing them out. But pastor, they're in a dead church. The church can catch on fire. Well, I didn't mean that literally, but I guess it could happen literally. I literally meant it could be in a revival. Somebody was like, yeah, burn it down, Jesus. Don't y'all go pray burn that thing down. 
Some of you all that are operating in faith, well, Pastor, you don't understand. I prayed for my family to get back together. Now here I am all alone. Will you stop it? Do you not not know that God can raise up another family for you? Do you not? But I won't. He, he done beat you to death. What's wrong with you? Well, I, I want that which hurt me. I didn't say it. Dr. Gann said that. I ain't with her. <laughs> I'm in denial. I never knew her. <laughs> See, here's the deal. In faith, God can raise you up. See, it's not about your right now situation. It's about what God has already said about it. So while you're going through some of the little small, intricate details of what's going on, don't stop speaking the word of faith. Do you know that every day of my life, God be my witness, I actually make a declaration. This is the day the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and I will be glad in it that this is the day that God has given me favor. I will receive everything that he has for me, that I have been made the head and not to tell that there is no weapon according to Isaiah 54, 17, that shall prosper and no tongue shall rise up against me. And if it does, this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, for I shall condemn it, for I have the power to do so. For my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that could ever ask even think because of the power that worketh within me and that there is nothing that is hidden from me that will not be revealed therefore every snare that is before me according to Psalms 92 God's going to reveal it if I've committed any sin according to the same word God had removed my sin as far as the east is from the west he will remember it no more therefore whatever I did whatever I've been I'm not anymore I am a new creature in Christ therefore all old things are passed away all new things are beginning today do you know I literally get up man I feel glory in here I literally get up and say these words to myself. God is going to put me and give me favor today. And if he wants me, I'll be in the face of a president or a president-elect. Hello. And I'll speak and declare the word of the Lord. That's why when it comes to pass, I don't lose my mind. That's why. How do you feel? You met the president to be. Didn't shock me. Why? Because the Bible declared that God would bring me in front of kings and great men. And I'll declare what he's already said. Therefore, every day of my life, I'm looking for a new venture because God is on my side. And if he be for me, according to Philippians 4, who then can stand against me? Shall death, life, angels, principalities, power, Romans 8, 12, 28, 24, 27, 29, said there is nothing that is formed, and therefore there is no principality, power, demon, angel, no life or death shall come against me, for I have all that I need, for in the power of my mouth is riches and glory forever. According to Proverbs 18, 21, life and death is in the power of the tongue. I shall speak speaking and reap the fruit thereof I am a fruitful man I'm going to multiply today and ain't a devil in hell that able to stop me to do it can you imagine if you start speaking like that why are you speaking death Abasha if you begin to speak life life will begin to come to you I don't know how I'm going to make it. Get away from me. I know how I'm going to make it. You better. I don't even like people speaking death around me. Ask my friends. You speak death around me, I say, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Don't you come around with me. That, that death is too close to me. What do you mean by that? A thousand shall fall at my right side and 10,000 at my left. I surround myself with life people. That is the doctrine of faith. Can I give you just 60 more seconds? Be seated just quickly. This is why it is so imperative that you are part of the right church. Because did you not read what we read earlier? If you're part of dead formalism, that means that you have a form of God. But there's no life in form. It's just form. I'm not critical on what people do. I was sharing with some of my leaders. You can close your Bibles. I'm finished. I'm not going to even tell you who it was. I was doing the research, Pastor Doug. You'll enjoy this. In the last few weeks, I've been doing a research. Thanks, Thomas. I've been doing some research. I'm not going to teach it, but I've been doing some research. I had a pastor friend ask me a question. And he was talking about, I'm trying to watch my words, about certain churches that have certain type of growth. So he asked me, he said, what's your, what's your thoughts about it, prophet? I said, well, I said, I'm not impressed. Why, why you say that? I said, the Bible says, according to the book of Acts, for 12 men, 
turn the world upside down. I said, so if that's the basis, then my question should be, what did they do? So then I went out because I said I would help him with something he was studying. I went out and I studied. I won't tell you where the churches are because I'm not here to throw water on that. That's, it's just not my thing. I learned that several of the top churches in this nation, you can take this however you want to, their gospel is something I don't recognize as it relates to scripture. So I tuned it in, one of the channels, and on one of the biggest churches in this nation, known for its great productions and stuff, on a Sunday morning, you can take this however you want, might as well stand up because I want to make some of you mad. Everybody stand. We're going home. On one, of the, on one of the biggest churches, Doug, Pastor Doug, they had one of the kids, they had, you know, it's a real big church, thousands of members. They have like screens like this on steroids all over the place. <laughs> and on the screen, Sunday morning, Sister G, they had Michael Jackson. Oh, no, I'm serious. Don't, don't get mad. <laughs> Sister G want to go home and do it. I got, I get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I know. And so he was singing this video about black or white. Uh, forgive me. I know y'all know. Y'all like, oh yeah, it don't matter. I don't know it. So I can't sing it. Here's the deal. In the church, Sunday morning, this is how they grow their youth. And I'm sitting because I'm doing a study. I'm helping a friend. I'm watching this and I'm thinking, God, help me not make a judgment here, but this is crazy to me. Michael Jackson is dancing and twerking and, and on, the, <laughs> on the platform at the church. Orson, don't go home and do this, son. They have one of their 10-year-old boys in the church. He's mimicking Michael Jackson. The, the thrusting, the dancing, the twisting. Another one of the scenes they had Beyonce singing this devilish song. And a little girl doing it. And they had the dancers. And this church is boasting on how they're getting so many thousands of kids. And I thought, that's not the scripture. All right, I, I just lost that group. People, the apostles didn't have to twerk. I got a smidgering of hand claps. Like, can I tell you what they did? It blow your mind. They fasted. They prayed. This is really going to get you. Don't, don't blame me. Just go read it for yourself. Those men stood in the faces of kings and argued about the bad culture of their day. Sound familiar? They were constantly saying, this is wrong. The political system is wrong. They were constantly ripping these politicians, ripping the political system. Our new modern church, no, no basis of faith, fasting, prayer, entertainment. If we entertain the people, mm -mm. Mm, not here. Let me tell you something. I look at these young men. I want these to be giants. <laughs> Intellectual, know their word. Be great thinkers, debaters, and have a sense of understanding of the culture of their day. See, you don't have to join the culture to change the culture. Can I tell you something? If you join the culture, then you've not changed the culture at all. You've become a part of it. All throughout the scripture, sanctify it, set it apart, separate it. You hear it over and over again. Sanctify my word in their hearts. Separate me from what they're doing. Oh, I'm not opposed to certain things. You all know me better than that. But what I'm trying to get you to see is there are some basic doctrines that we all need to grow up. How many are ready to grow up in 2017? I mean, come on, you're really ready to grow up. Can I ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes? Would you repeat this with me? Say, Father, forgive me of all my sin, every transgression. Say, I realize in years that have passed, I've been immature, but I declare this day, this will be a day that I grow in you. And from this day forward, I'll serve you, I'll worship you, as long as you allow me to do it in Jesus' name. Say, I believe over 2,000 years ago, you died 
Three days later, you were resurrected. I believe one day you're coming again. If you really prayed that prayer, put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand. We hope this message has been a blessing in your life. To hear more inspiring, transformative messages, visit glorytoglory.org and make sure you follow and like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.